welcome back. Uh, so, in the last module what we have seen is uh, the effect of loading right. If you remember what we have done, we have connected the potential divider to the inverting amplifier and we saw that the expected output was different than the experimental output. So, let us see if we connect uh, the potential divider circuit to a sorry to a non inverting amplifier. In this particular case what will be the output and can we still see the loading effect or not all right. So, for that if you come to the screen right this is again the aim is same, but there is a third part of the same aim which is to study the effect of loading. So, here as you see this is same circuit which is potential divider and this is your non inverting amplifier non inverting amplifier. We have already seen what is non inverting amplifier, we have already seen how you can use non inverting amplifier in your experiment right. So, uh, you apply a voltage to the non inverting terminal of the non inverting amplifier through the potential divider circuit through the potential divider circuit right and you measure the output V out 3. So, what is that connect V out 1 to V 3 as shown in figure. So, let me just clear this one V out 1 V out 1 is connected to V 3 as shown in figure all right apply 2 volts DC for power supply at V 1. So, here instead of 5 volts we are applying 2 volts DC we are applying 2 volts DC all right observe and note down the output voltage V out 3 we have to measure V out 3 that means that if I apply 2 volts what is my V out 3 what is my V out 3 I have to measure all right compare the out observed output voltage V out 3 with the expected theoretical value expected theoretical value all right. Now, what we have seen we have seen non inverting amplifier in non inverting amplifier what is the gain the gain of the non inverting amplifier is given by 1 plus R f by R 1 right this is the gain. So, here what is R 1 uh, R f R f is your 1 kilo ohm R 1 or R in is 1 kilo ohm. So, if both is 1 that means that 1 plus 1 by 1 this is 1 plus 1 this is equals to 2. So, give my gain is 2 my gain is 2 easy very easy very easy to understand the gain of the non inverting amplifier. So, I have a gain of 2 right that means if I apply 2 volts if I apply 2 volts my expected output would be expected output should be 2 volts across R 1 and R 2. So, this is 1 volt 1 volt by gain of 2 1 volt into 2. So, output will be 2 volts right. So, my expected output at V 3 is 2 volts right. If I apply here 4 volts 4 volts right. So, if I apply 4 volts my V out would be 2 volts 2 into 2 2 volts into 2 2 is your gain this is your gain this is V 4 volts right. Now, this is non inverting amplifier that is why I am not writing minus last circuit if you remember it was inverting amplifier then we have to use uh, uh, negative sign because of phase shift. So, in this particular case uh, let us see uh, if I apply 2 volts to the potential divider circuit and uh, if I measure the voltage output uh, at the end of the non inverting amplifier. So, if I apply 2 volts at the in, uh, potential divider circuit as an input and if I measure the output at a non uh, inverting uh, output of the uh, amplifier right. So, what is the output and let us consider the uh, case which I have written on the screen which is 2 volts and 4 volts uh, and let us see what is the experimental output and compare with the theoretical output all right. So, let us see and uh, let us focus on the breadboard once again again uh, we have Suman with us to help us. Uh, so, uh, he is going to apply uh, 2 volts across the potential divider circuit across the potential divider circuit he is applying 2 volts as you can see on the DC power supply we can see 2 volts which is given to the potential divider circuit which is same like last time if you remember right this is a potential divider circuit which is this one 
and we have applied two volts across it two volts across it this is a potential divider circuit where applied two volts and then yellow color wire is the output is output is is a is a uh, voltage across resistor r2 all right so let us see what is the value of resistor r2 voltage across r2 voltage across r2 is 1.009 volts voltage across r2 is 1.009 volts this voltage we are applying to the non inverting amplifier so what let us see what is the output at the non inverting amplifier output of the non inverting amplifier the output of the non inverting amplifier when we apply a voltage or connect the output of the uh, potential divider uh, is 2.017 volts 2.017 volts that means that when he applied a input of 2 volts across the potential divider across the potential divider 2 volts he applied he found that the output this one was 1.00 some volts and the output V3 was <coughs> 2. Point <coughs> sorry was close to 2.017 volts 2.017 volts which is extremely close to 2 volts which is extremely close to 2 volts here we are not we are not getting any loading effect we are not getting any loading effect let us take an another example in which we are applying 4 volts as input all right 4 volts at the input of the potential divider or across the potential divider 4 volts across the potential divider and when we apply 4 volts across potential divider the output of the potential divider output of the potential divider will show us the voltage this is 4 volts at the across the potential divider what is the output at the resistor R2 2.008 volts 2.008 8 volts. So, let me write down here on the screen 2.008 2 volts very good. Let us measure V out 3 which is here V out 3. So, let us see what is V out 3 V out 3 3.99 volts. 3.99 volts. So, let us write down here on the screen 3.99 volts again see this see this right that means that what we are seeing what we are looking at we are connected the V out 1 to V 3 then we have applied 2 volts then we have compared the theoretical and expected value what we see is it will be seen that V out 3 shows better compliance with expected output as compared to V out 2. So, the point is a point here is that if I go and integrate my non inverting amplifier with the potential divider as the circuit uh, instead of using uh, inverting amplifier with the potential divider as a circuit then I would see that the loading effect in the case of non inverting amplifier would be less or will be uh, extremely less or negligible compared to the inverting amplifier. In case of inverting amplifier we can see that the expected output uh, was 4 volts or 2 volts or 10 volts and the then the and the uh, experimental output was was half of it or one fourth of it that was because of the loading effect right. But here in case of this particular experiment what we see is if you use non inverting amplifier the loading effect is not there loading effect is not there. So, guys you have to understand now that uh, if you want to remove the loading effect what kind of amplifier you have to use right. And uh, if I use inverting amplifier I will have a loading effect if I use non inverting amplifier I will not have loading effect ok. So, uh, now again why we took this example because a potential divider we have said initially that one of the resistors of the potential divider you consider as a sensor right you consider one of the resistor of the potential divider as a sensor and which kind of sensor it can be any sensor that will show change in resistance that will show change in resistance 
what kind of sensors are used that can show change in resistance one is your strain gauge another one is your temperature sensor another one is your force sensor another one it can be thermistor right which is temperature sensor thermistor uh, another can be for mass flow uh, measurement so so the point is whenever you have to use a sensor which can show change in resistance and if you put this sensor as a potential divider then to reduce the loading effect you use the non inverting amplifier that is the gist of this particular experiment now we can understand that if i want to remove the loading effect from the sensor or the output of the sensor or output of the potential divider to the uh, uh, when i connect or interface the electronic module for the i can use the in a non inverting term non inverting amplifier but what if what if i use a buffer between non inverting amplifier and uh, 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 between an inverting amplifier and a potential divider so will buffer solve the problem buffer is what voltage follower right we have seen voltage follower circuit in in previous modules right so how how voltage follower circuit will work i have also given you an example right by by telling that uh, election and then the mic and the speaker right so uh, at the speaker uh, at the at the, uh, the, uh, the loud speaker the the final uh, uh, amplifier that is generally used is common collector amplifier or voltage follower at the input is common emitter amplifier or high impedance um, uh, input impedance amplifiers so uh, the point is if i use the same voltage follower in the circuit where i have integrated the potential divider with the inverting amplifier in between right potential divider inverting amplifier buffer voltage follower so if i integrate this can i reduce the loading effect can i reduce the loading effect so in the next module let us see this particular experiment where we will use a buffer between the inverting amplifier and the potential divider all right so i hope that in this particular module you got an idea of what is loading and how we can reduce the loading by using non inverting amplifier connected with the potential divider so i'll see you in the next class thank you for your time and i'll see you in the next class with a new circuit uh, where you will really understand uh, how we can remove this loading effect thank you